there are some basic practicalities to consider, such as how to comply with recent shifts in social etiquette while eating or drinking out in social, in con <clears throat> drinking out in confined space. Even after coronavirus first began to spread in the UK, many Britons would never have imagined themselves wearing face masks. Now increasing numbers of people are choosing to do so, either in hopes of protecting themselves to help stop the spread of disease or simply as a mark of politeness. Observing this new code of conduct is significantly harder when a delicious bowl of chicken tikka masala and a glass of wine are placed in front of you. Good evening, viewers. Uh, good evening, panels. I have, I have with me uh, uh, tonight Mr. Shakat Hussain. Um, he is the CEO and uh, a general manager, acting general manager for Westin uh, Dhaka. And I've got Mohammed Musharraf. Good evening. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Good, thank you. And I've got with me Mr. Musharraf Khan uh, Bilash, uh, Michelin guide, uh, Michelin guide restaurant uh, uh, Bilash in Wolverhampton. How are you, Mr. Musharraf? Good afternoon to you. Very well, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, good, good. Uh, Mr. Shakawat, thank you for joining us from all the way from uh, uh, Bangladesh. How is it in Bangladesh now? Yeah, uh, Bangladesh is passing a very tough time right at this moment. And uh, here uh, we are uh, we, we are struggling with our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, working periods and uh, uh, with the total environment and the, uh, the coronavirus thing has actually really affected in Bangladesh, particularly the maximum effect has come in uh, the, the catering, food service, and hospitality, tourism, travel industry. So we we are um, really at a very difficult situation in Bangladesh. I hope uh, you guys are aware. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, I want to know that um, the the hospitality industry is huge all over the world. Um, how is it affected the big chains like the West End? Yes, uh, uh, before this uh, coronavirus uh, thing, uh, we were uh, doing a great business in Western Dhaka, you know. Uh, it is the number one hotel in Bangladesh and um, consequently, the last 13 years, we are doing the great business and we are uh, giving the hospitality to the people of the world and uh, our world community in one uh, sentence, they can say that if we go to Bangladesh, we'll go to Western Dhaka. However, Right at this moment, uh, the business of Western Dhaka is um, is nearly nothing. Uh, we are struggling with room business. Uh, we had some few guests, those who so were uh, struggling to fly out from Bangladesh. So we had some few a few rooms uh, last uh, couple of uh, months, so two three months, uh, five six rooms. So you can say that this is only uh, two three percent percent occupancy of our uh, uh, which was our total occupancy in Bangladesh uh, in Western Dhaka. It was nearly 80% in uh, in such time. But right at this moment, we are passing 2-3% occupancy and no restaurant is doing any business except one of our uh, restaurant that is in daily treat, it is in ground floor. So we are doing very small scale uh, business, maintaining all the social distancing and uh, maintaining all the uh, hygiene, sanitations and HACCP rules and the government rules. So uh, we are struggling with the business. Thank you. Sure, sure. Um, now uh, it's understandable. I mean, it's all over the world. Um, the the mainly hit, but the all, all the industries are hit, but especially the hospitality industry, which is um, uh, uh, is very much a, a big um, industry itself, especially when you combine tourism with it. Um, right. I want to know um, any date. Um, I mean, uh, has been given by the government. The hospitality industry in Bangladesh will be reopening. Uh, sure. Uh, Bangladesh government actually announced uh, our civil aviation and tourism ministry. Uh, they said that um, by 15th, uh, by last week of this uh, month, uh, we our international flight will be open. So uh, depends on the international flight um, uh, traffic, how much uh, guests will come and all this. And domestic flight has been started. So domestic flight is already in function and um, international flight will open uh, to fly their, uh, operate their flights end of this month so let's see what uh, business uh, comes from uh, international arena however 
uh, we are hoping that the situation will uh, overcome by one two months let's say our scientists and all the researchers in bangladesh they are saying that by the end of uh, august uh, this situation will go down and uh, by the month of july actually it will slow down the effect and all so let's see we are hoping all the best um yeah inshallah fingers crossed uh, obviously it is a high time in bangladesh we have passed this in uk a um, couple of months back but uh, this is a very high time in bangladesh uh, inshallah we will be okay soon uh, thank you very much, uh, Shagat Bhai. Um, I'll come back to you very soon. I want to speak to Mr. Musharraf in Ulvahampton in UK. Uh, good, evening, uh, good afternoon, Musharraf. How are you? Good afternoon. Can you hear me, Musharraf? I, I, I can hear you clearly, yes. Okay, okay. Um, I, I think we are, having, we are finding difficulties uh, hearing you. Anyhow, um, how are you, obviously, the pubs and restaurants are due to open, but obviously there are no basic, <laughs> I mean, there, there are no uh, uh, guidelines, exact date when it's gonna open. Some are saying end of this uh, month, some are saying 4th of July. Obviously we from the caterers Association in the UK contacted uh, the government and uh, they have uh, confirmed that there isn't a fixed date yet, but hopefully by the 15th of this month, we should know a certain date when it will be open. I want to know from you, how are you preparing yourself? We are preparing ourselves in certain areas. I mean, we're still waiting for documented lists to be announced by the government, whereas yeah. what we need to adhere to. We want the public to know that the site is going to be open. We've um, do, you, do you want to, uh, Mashar Abai, uh, do you want to come, Mashar Abai? Can you come a little bit closer? I think um, uh, we are having a difficulty he's hearing you. Is that clearer? It's a little bit clearer, yes. Um, yep. Sure. How, how is, that? is that better in terms of volume? It's is, is better than before, yes. Go on. Okay, in terms of our reopening, um, we are going through a well-explained documented list that we need to adhere to. We want the public to know that when we are open, we are to go down a checklist which the government shall be issuing mm -hmm. to make it feel safe for all our customers and guests to come back to us again. Sure. There are a lot of changes which need to be made, you know, on, on a, upon, of, you know upon of opening. Um, changes will make a big impact because the hospitality industry takes a lot of customers who come in, they become guests of the family, where a lot of owners, maitre d's would want to shake hands, or maybe, you know, a hug with a lady along with a kiss on the cheek, all <laughs> that will have to change, you know, there'll be, there'll be, that, that will be non-existent anymore. So basically what you're saying is that basically the yeah. preparation, what you're doing is uh, you're, you're taking uh, some kind of a step towards uh, training your staff that obviously no handshake, no hugging um, uh, with the customer, the customers that you know, because obviously mainly our customers, they are sort of like a, a family. They come, the regular customers and stuff, they know each other, okay. uh, the local. It becomes the Indian restaurant has become a local place for them. Uh, for them. So this is what you're saying, isn't it? It is, you know. Obviously, obviously, you know, it becomes a more of a family establishment. You know, you have a relationship with a customer, which mm -hmm. which has gone far. You know, so you you have to avoid the handshake. You have to avoid that close closeness. You still have to adhere to that two meter two meter gap between yourself and the customer. So there's a lot of changes that you have to make. You know, as as we're going along, you know, you you have to undertake a lot of different different ideas and steps in terms of service as well. You know how we shall be serving our customers. Mm -hmm. Sure. What about um, um, the, uh, there are some, I mean, in Europe, uh, you've got Italian restaurant in Europe and like Italy and France are opening at this moment. Is there something that we can take from them because the French has already opened their restaurants? Certainly, I mean, you know, we are closely looking at the developments on how their service structure, how their 
manners are towards customers. So it's definitely worth looking at these restaurants abroad to pick ideas and use them to our advantage, basically replicating what they're doing there. Sure. Because obviously, it's been it's been tried and tested, and this will be a good point where we can pick up things from there, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. Mm, okay, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Musharraf. Um, I'll come back to you in a bit, and uh, let me speak to uh, Shagad Bai from Bangladesh, Westin. Uh, Shagad Bai, you're here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. 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 Exactly, sure. Um, yeah. So, how how is um, obviously uh, if the if the flights are open end of this month, then uh, the hospitality industry will slowly uh, uh, will open alongside the flights and everything. So, how are you preparing yourself uh, as a big chain like yourself? Obviously, you have to maintain a, a lot of like us here. We have to maintain mm -hmm. a lot of uh, guidelines from the government: the social distancing, gloves. Um, a mask, even mask, we have to wear in the restaurants. Um, so, what sort of preparation are you uh, uh, taking, and are you having uh, to pass it on to your staff? Can you can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I can hear. You. Did you hear my question? Yeah. So uh, actually, after coronavirus, yeah, I, I, I heard your question. Yes. Sure. So can I answer? Sure, sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, actually, after this coronavirus thing, uh, we we have learned a lot, and depends uh, on the government circulation and our local uh, public health engineering department, our health ministry, and on the WHO rules. We are opening our restaurants and hotel uh, with some new normals. So we, we are preparing our. Uh, if I if I uh, tell you from the arrival to departure of a guest, we have started our guest uh, uh, guest car has a transparent um, a transparent um, uh, glass type things inside in the uh, car so that it gives a, a strict separation from the driver and the uh, and the guest. So. Uh, this is an acrylic bar actually, so that an um, ac acrylic sheet. So by this acrylic sheet, our uh, guest and the driver has been separated, so that no contamination can uh -huh. come. And in the, in the car, in the car, uh, we give hand sanitization, we give mask, uh, we give uh, uh, we give uh, gloves to the guest, so that a guest can use it, and it's for every guest. And bringing the guest in the hotel car um, uh, is um, disinfected uh, before entering in the hotel premises. And after then, he enters and uh, he will be uh, entering through the archway. And um, uh, then his temperature will be checked. If temperature is okay, then he will be he will be passing through, go to concierge and do some. Uh, we are doing less paper uh, job and making things so fast so that guests can go ahead. And we are allowing only two guests in lift so that uh, we are not allowing more than two guests in lift and. Uh, um, this is how guests are going to, to their room, and we uh, we brought all our staffs, associate members in the hotel, and they are staying in the hotel. So uh, we are avoiding the contamination from coming from home and all. So they are staying actually in the hotel, and they are serving our guests. And uh, just to say, you uh, our banquet and catering business, we are maintaining the social distancing, and we are giving a, a small pack of uh, gloves and uh, one mask and a uh, 30 ml. Uh, hand sanitization so that he can take it and he can use it and this is how we are doing it in our banqueting and in our restaurant uh, we are uh, allowing uh, uh, to sit in our restaurants uh, maintaining a clear social distancing and i forgot to say you one thing no guest is allowed in the hotel without a mask because at this moment it is a tough time we are passing through so uh, he has to have a mask and it is a government rule of bangladesh also Everybody has to wear a mask when he come out from his home. So this is some. There are some new normals that what we are practicing, and through these new normals, our uh, guests are aware, and we we are giving this kind of uh, advertisements to all our corporates and everyone, and we are making an awareness so that they can understand, they can cooperate, uh, as it is a global pandemic. So everybody understands this, and they are cooperating. 
so this is how we slowly starting our business and uh, we hope we will continue uh, in future dates in a good way thank you sure sure so basically um uh, it is you're following uh, the international guidelines like we are and we are um, i mean we are preparing for end of this month uh, so uh, so as you are as well in uh, bangladesh um sure so it is it is a, 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 a actually combined effort of a um, the from top level to the uh, uh, the waiter as well like the senior sure. manager floor manager waiter so everybody has to be uh, in uh, in line with uh, the rules and everything so it, it is going to be a uh, as you said it's kind of new norm but it's going to be a little bit yeah. difficult actually uh, is there anything that you were doing uh, doing to sort of like um, uh, obviously it's a uh, international chain uh, uh, you are doing it but i want to know that what are you doing to uh, get confidence of the customers uh, are you doing anything that on your uh, 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 I don't know on a marketing policy that uh, you're doing something to get the confidence of the customers. Sure. Returning uh, say, to your hotels uh, and restaurants. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, see, mm. we we are uh, clearly doing uh, many things to gain the confidence of our customers. For example, uh, the, um, the thing that we are doing as a new norms. I have already uh, said you. So these guidelines we are we are publishing to our. Uh, uh, this is a Marriott straight uh, straight card guideline. And we are giving to our corporates, to our embassies, um, where our clients and maximum uh, uh, corporate guests are uh, aligned with our business. So, uh, um, few things we are doing. Uh, I guess uh, all Marriott hotel uh, are doing that, and we are the first hotel in Bangladesh uh, to, um, uh, to say you're happy to do that. We are giving a pack where 30 ml, uh, 30 ml hand sanitization, uh, hand sanitizer, 30 ml small hand sanitizer, uh, a mask. Uh, with a with a, um, a small wrap and uh, and gloves to all our guests, those who are in house, and to all the guests, those who are coming in the banqueting, to all the guests, those who are coming in the restaurants. That's what we are giving from our side. If any guests have it, yes, he has it. But uh, if uh, no one have it, we, we are giving to them. So th this is what we are doing, and uh, uh, we are cleaning the whole premises of the hotel. We are cleaning the uh, uh, you know day and night. We are cleaning. And we are disinfecting the whole area, uh, whole premises, uh, and polishing things so that uh, people can see that it's more cleaner than the usual time. We are giving more effort on cleaning and safety of the guests so that, and we are um, giving these things to our customers' benefits, and we are um, communicating all these to our guests so that they are gaining uh, confidence on us and uh, they are coming to our hotel. Sure, sure. Thank you, uh, uh, thank you, Shahbaz. Um, I want to uh, move back to uh, Musharraf, uh, Mr. Musharraf. Um, small restaurants can accommodate. Um, actually, this is this is a uh, question from one of our um, uh, viewers that uh, uh, from last week actually. So I want to add this to this is uh, in line with our topic today. So I want to ask you that question. The message was like small restaurants can accommodate a maximum forty diners. Uh, is concerned where the friendly approach staff are part of the draw. Ordering employees to stop interacting with the customers will tarnish its reputation. Being able to socially distance in a restaurant of this size will be so difficult, especially in terms of approaching the table and maintaining good service. Taking that away would make it a different place to go out for dinner. The owner says. So basically, what it is that they're trying to say that look, if we take out all this away, uh, going to the customers, moving away from customers, and everything, the the reputation of a uh, a place will come down. So what do you want to say on this, uh, Mr. Masharov? Is this? I don't think the reputation will. Can you hear me, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can uh, come in before, it'd be uh, even better. Okay. Um... The reputation won't have an impact as it's a pandemic session. You know, everyone is aware of how the distancing rules are. So I don't think it will vanish as long as you still treat your customers with respect, you know, a, a laugh and a giggle. You'll never lose that aspect of it because this is only temporary. You know, the quicker we can get rid of this COVID-19 you know, the easier it will be for the whole lifestyle of everyone. So I don't think anyone should be worried as, you know, 
losing away the atmosphere of any business. Okay. Um, so obviously, as you know, uh, we talked about it before. Our restaurant sector is sort of like a uh, it's a local place for the uh, uh, local people. Uh, obviously, friendly environment. Everybody knows everybody. The customer knows, you know, the next table customer, everything. So it is going to be a little difficult to keep them in one place. Well, there'll be there'll be rules in place where you know the, the social distancing will always always live on. So, in terms of time management, again, we have to wait and see on how the legislation opens. You know, we have to see how restaurants in Europe have opened. We have to wait and see how clubs operate to see how close people can be, how close people can talk to each other. Like you say, a restaurant is a family local venue for a lot of diners. Yes, so, yes. You know, people come to meet and greet others, people come to meet and greet the owners, the staff. So the restaurant is based around a family concept. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, uh, uh, that's fine. Uh, now, tell me, what what actually is Bilash doing uh, uh, regarding the reopening? What is your strategy? What are you doing? Okay, strategy is, obviously, we are to reduce a hell of a number of covers to begin with. You know, um, where we operate our dining area and the corporate dining area with we, you know, with covers, we are reducing that dramatically in order to maintain the social distance rules and to make it easier for our members of staff to approach the table, etc. Um, there's a lot of planning that's going ahead in terms of hygiene and cleanliness. We have taken extra precautions with our facilities, which facilitate the ladies and gents um, laboratories. There's additional hand sanitizing units there's um, not gloves. There's, 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 there's to open the doors. We've, 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 we've got some kicking plates where they can kick the door open with uh -huh. a lighter mechanism. So the, 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 the least amount of hand that goes and surfaces, that's the way we left our laboratories. And that will be continuously controlled and cleaned accordingly. Sure. Okay. Um, what about, I mean, obviously, um, we had a discussion uh, before coming on live and um, you had a plan that you're planning uh, a, because um, it's not just a two months thing or three months thing. You are actually planning for next one year. We are. We certainly are. We, we're actually planning our cash flow and budgets for the next 18 months um, okay. to see where we are. So we've already taken precautions by speaking to our landlords and speaking to various utility companies who supply us our utilities to see if there is a reduction that can be taken in place. We've taken, we've taken into account a number of things that we, we, you know, where we can tighten our belt on savings and paying outwards. Um, we'll be looking to reduce our opening hours to, to start with in order to reduce our costs to the payroll as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what moment, about, um, obviously, um, uh, is, is there factors that... Mashaba, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Yes, um, I mean, uh, what do you want to tell us about the marketing? I mean, plan. Obviously, there are a lot of cuts here and there we have to make to adjust to uh, uh, the current demand and need and everything. But obviously, to go out and let the people know, we have to have a, a budget uh, for our marketing, isn't it? Definitely, you know, marketing budget is you know is essential for any business. Um, where you'd be, you know, what the precautions we have done ourselves, where we have a marketing budget every month, we have now condensed that to once a quarter. Um, and our, you know, our main focus of marketing, we'd like to use social media where it's, you know, we can, we can concentrate on the locality, it has more vision, it has more awareness. Um, along with that, we have a strong database where we can use. Um, so for someone who hasn't thought of a budget for marketing, it's essential that they do so. And if they do have a marketing budget, 
please use it accordingly to, to you maximize the budget and maximizing the utility of it. Okay. So, so what you're saying is that uh, the marketing budget is very essential. So if we don't have a budget, we need to make a budget or uh, if you do have it, we make sure that we keep that or we increase it. Yeah? Correct. Yeah, good, good. Um, okay. And what about uh, the other aspect of it, uh, Mosharabai, um, regarding um, the the negotiation with the landlords? Um, um, is that something is, is very important? Because obviously it's not going to be uh, three months, as you said. It needs to be, you know, we need, when we talk to, your, uh, talk to our landlords, we need to talk for next one year, from June to next June. Definitely, you know, I suggest you all um, obviously, uh, obviously there is a discussion. Everybody knows that uh, there is a recession looming on our head. Uh, as soon as we come out of this COVID-19 issue, then there is a big one coming towards us, um, a, a recession. If that recession hits uh, UK or the world, the governments uh, will not be with us, like how they're helping us with the, uh, uh, the bounce back loan, the follow scheme. Um, because the government has ordered for the restaurant to be closed on the 20th of March, hence this all these funding is coming through. But once the recession comes in, there won't be the government is gonna won't be there for us. So uh, if whatever we do, we need to do we need to negotiate for the next one year, 18 months, isn't it, to survive? Definitely. You know, once the government uplifts the pandemic, you we will be looking at a massive recession coming in. Everyone who's taken advantage of the BBL loans, the payments will be kicking in from 12 months thereafter. So by if we don't plan ahead now by discussing with your landlords, the business rates team, your even your accountants who do your monthly management on VAT payroll, you need to be in discussion with them also because it's a fixed cost. Everything that's a, that has a fixed cost on your plan, on your accounts, analyze them, review them, speak to the UT, to speak to the suppliers, end users. It's very, very important at the moment. Okay, um, yeah, but th this is crucial. That's why, obviously, from Caterers Association UK, we have already lodged it uh, with the government. There's a four-point plan. One of the main thing is we ask for the bounce back loan uh, payment uh, should start after another one year or six months. So we have asked for it to, uh, uh, instead of starting the bounce back loan in 2021, we want it to start from 2022. And also we have asked for the, um, uh, if possible, uh, VAT uh, uh, to be uh, sort of uh, suspended for six months eight, or eight months. So this is something very crucial because whatever we do, uh, we need to plan it for the next one year or 18 months. It's not just this three, four months that we need to plan for. This is very important. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mosharov. Um, uh, this is very important because uh, from CA UK, Catalyst Association UK, we have uh, had a discussion, we had had a meeting, several meetings, and then we have wrote to the government uh, uh, last week uh, on the four-point plan. And one of, within that four-point plan, there are two things that uh, are reflected by uh, uh, Mosharov uh, is um, the multi-plan payment should be deferred for another uh, year or so or six months extended for uh, starting the payments uh, after another one year or so. Uh, the VAT or any other taxation should be deferred or be suspended for a six months period. Anyhow, I want to come back to Mr. Shakawat uh, in Bangladesh. Um, he was his acting general uh, manager at uh, Dhaka Westin. Anyway, uh, uh, Mr. Shakawat, um, Obviously, COVID-19 um, obviously is there that we can't, no one can do anything. But uh, from this, I think it's a period that uh, we need to sit back, think about it and restart our engine again. And it will be a huge boost as soon as we come out of this. What do you think of that? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, see, uh, this uh, COVID, actually, we don't have any anything uh, to do uh, right at this moment. We, we can... Uh, we understood that we we have to live with this uh, uh, this kind of situation. So uh, Mr. Musharraf is uh, he rightly said that at least 18 months is very crucial for our, us uh, from uh, uh, this month this month to next year full year uh, it is very tough for us. So 
what we are doing and we are suggesting to our colleagues we are suggesting to our stakeholders uh, just to have some patience and uh, to um, come down with the situation and do whatever is necessarily important to do for example uh, in here in bangladesh uh, many uh, investors they are thinking not to do hotel business anymore uh, you know uh, the support of the international traveler is not that much in bangladesh and they are predicting um, many guests and many travelers will not come in bangladesh hence the uh, investors they are not, they are thinking uh, that this kind of business will not be profitable in coming days number one number two the staffs and associates those who those who are willing to work in this in this field and who are currently working they are also thinking that uh, this field is not the right field to work and the, uh, this kind of thing and again the uh, suppliers and all the all other stakeholders like landlords and this kind of people uh, when they are not getting the rents and all uh, other things for the uh, restaurants and all uh, so uh, uh, everything is coming in a negative way so at this moment uh, i would uh, request everyone to have some patience and uh, deal with the situation this is this is not something that we can do anything rather we can uh, we can accommodate with the situation and we we can uh, uh, be um, agile with the uh, comfortable comfortability uh, with the situation uh, in many ways for example number 1 uh, at this moment those who want to work in this industry they can learn uh, many things they they can understand more they can learn more there are so many webinars um, uh, courses and many things so they can understand and they can stay in this industry with the same knowledge if they go behind and they they don't they think that okay i am gone then they will be surely gone uh, what they need to do they need to uh, make them ready for always and make them demandable for all the time so that when situation comes they can come back to the uh, uh, to the job and when investors for the investors investors should not think long uh, short term they are thinking short term so i, I am saying uh, basically for bangladesh market they are thinking very short term they are thinking that for covid everything is gone this that actually it is not uh, this uh, this situation will overcome and this uh, uh, and travel industry and hospitality industry will bounce back so what we need to do we need to uh, accommodate this uh, situation at this moment and for the um, for the investors and the uh, staffs they need to do something secondary to make their livelihood uh, maybe some other thing they can find it to make their livelihood and to their uh, their uh, income from the second income or this kind of thing if the situation is more worse here in bangladesh so this is this is one of the suggestion that i can say sure thank you i'm um, hopefully inshallah it's not going to go any worse and um, we don't want it to go any worse because it will be a disaster for any country to go any worse than this uh, inshallah it won't but anyhow um, it's a very uh, good advice but obviously to go for a secondary income it's uh, something else setting up a new business and stuff like that it will be a little bit difficult uh, for at this moment if you can't go into the uh, uh, business that what you are doing at this moment and doing a new business at this moment it's going to be a little bit difficult uh, mr masharov but anyhow uh, maybe some some businesses in bangladesh can restart um, and people can go into that um, but we are we are fortunate alhamdulillah that uh, basically the government obviously bangladesh government is doing whatever uh, it can uh, to help uh, the uh, the businesses uh, the public uh, as well and same here in uk the government is doing whatever it can anyway in terms of food safety is there any government guideline in place uh, mr shakal yes yes uh, uh, the hasaf rule is very much practical uh, practicable here in bangladesh and uh, uh, for any breads and any type of product uh, i can Uh, that that is um, uh, producing by our hotels uh, bsti uh, tests every product and they give a license and um, they give a test report and then we can sell only uh, to the uh, to the customer and the bangladesh um, the government has assured that all the restaurants will be sorry um and it's not um mr mr mashor uh, making mr shakawat we can, we couldn't hear you at all 
Mr. Uh, Shakawat. Uh, 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 oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. So I'm. Uh, we we couldn't hear you at all, uh, Mr. Shakawat. Yeah. Uh, I am saying it again. Yeah, please. please. I, mean, I, I want to know that um, does the uh, does the government have any uh, guidelines on uh, uh, food safety? Yes, government has a uh, surely that what we are preparing like bread and uh, donut, whatever item, person, whatever item we are preparing in our hotel. Government authority test it and they give us a certification to sell it. Number one. Number two, they have a clear guideline of uh, cleanliness and hygiene to maintain and uh, to um, uh, with the right temperature of the food and uh, to freeze it in the right temperature, to deliver in the right temperature and with the durable time uh, we have before the expiry date and all, uh, we have to sell it. Otherwise, we have to destroy it. So this kind of this kind of rules are here in place from previous times to now, and now it is reinforcing much more uh, from government side. And being a five-star hotel, five inter international chain, our hotel, uh, Western Hotel uh, here in Bangladesh, is maintaining all the standards, uh, standards, and uh, Western Hotel is doing uh, great things with uh, with hygiene and food safety. Sure, sure. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bush, uh, uh, Shakat. We will uh, be coming to you very shortly again. I want to um, finish. Uh, well, I want to hear from uh, Mr. Musharraf on a few um, last few things um, about. I mean, what do you think, uh, Mr. Musharraf? The the government ought to do at this moment um, uh, when we are talking about uh, what they need to do is obviously they've done uh, quite a lot, but if we look at the industry. Is this enough going forward for another one year or so? Most certainly not. You know, the government for the hospitality industry, such as, you know, our smaller chain restaurants, you know, individual outlets, the government needs to do definitely some extra support that needs to come in once this pandemic is over. We need the government to support us on extensions, further extensions on holidays, such as the BBL loans, because I'm, you know, we've all taken advantage of that. Um, there needs to be an extension done on anything that government can put their hands into in terms of support us, supporting us. Deferral systems on the taxes, such as the VAT, corporation tax, and national insurance scheme. If all those come into place, you know, it may it, it may give us some leg to stand on over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of taking advantage for us, you know, I suggest if there was an additional health and safety, you know, grant available for people within our industry to enhance their health and hygiene, I think it's very, very crucial to get that in place. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, can you hear me, uh, Mr. Basharov? I can hear you now, yes. Yes. So basically, you were saying that the government need to do um, uh, uh, extend the uh, hospitality industries, the loan that has been paid, they need to extend the uh, start date of the payment to start with. Yeah, to start with, basically, you know, instead of a 12-month repayment, you know, where we have got now at the moment, a 12-month holiday, you know, on, on repayment, that should be extended to at least 24 months. Uh -huh, that's the uh -huh. extension that needs to be enforced. That's right, that's right. So so you're echoing the same thing that Catering Association was uh, uh, um, uh, uh, working on. Uh, that's that's very good. Um, uh, what, what I mean, obviously, this is one of the things that they need to do. You know, uh, is there is there... A chance. I mean, is there any um, way that the government should uh, help? I mean, not now. Another three months down the line, if the recession hits, that uh, they should help the industry with their further grant. 
Yeah, I mean, it all depends on how the grant is utilised. You know, the grant should be nominated to, you know, in, in, a grant should be given to the business if they can make the grant work. You know, if we was to award, if we was to be awarded a grant, you know, we would invest in additional health and health, you know, health and safety courses. You know, where we can enhance that, where we can give the customer the satisfaction, what they need to know that they're coming into an establishment where it's going to be safer. You know, so the grant, the grant will be good, but the grant needs to come into better, better use. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, that, that's, that's from the government side of it. Now, as an owner, as a restaurant owner and a business owner, a hotel owner, what is our responsibility as well towards uh, uh, the, the industry, towards the government support that we've got? Um, how, how do we utilize this fund? Is this something that uh, we need to utilize it wisely? The government has given us uh, uh, the grant. Someone has, has given us a BBL loan, bounce back loan, which is so easy for some people that even uh, they're not doing any credit scoring. They're not doing nothing. All there is, you're applying, you've got a business, you prove it, you've got it. The government has done that. What is our responsibility uh, uh, towards that, uh, uh, Mr. Musharraf? But, you know, obviously the funding has come through the government, like you say, and it's come through very easily, you know, so we have to thank our government for supporting us in that way. What you have to understand is this grant and the BBL loan is for the business. Make sure you utilize it towards the business to enhance your business, to make your business safe, to make your employees safe, because as long as your employees are safe, they are the people who are going to react with your customers. So you need to give them assurance that you have, you have com, you know, compli complied, with, you know, complied with legislation to open your business with the right manner of your staff and your customers need to feel safe, fully assured that they are coming to an establishment where we have undertaken all necessities to make our place safe. Uh huh. Uh huh. So basically, the the uh, the onus is on us uh, to spend this money uh, uh, responsible. And this is something that clearly says on the uh, um, on the small dotted line that this money is only for the business because we can only invest it in the business. We can only pay rent from this. We can pay staff from this. We can buy equipment from this. We can. This is the money that we need to utilize within the restaurant sector within the business, isn't it? Yes. We can't use this money to buy properties, can we? No, no. This business is simply <laughs> for <laughs> investing in your business. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, uh, so the, for, for for the owner's side. So, what you're saying is, like, from the owner's perspective, I need to utilize this money for this business only. So, if I do that, uh, there is a chance that I may go on the other side of the tunnel, and uh, everything should be fine. Yeah, you know, we, what we need to establish, you know, whatever funding we have received, we need to, because we, the, the funding was provided to make sure your business is afloat. The government provided this loan to make sure you still keep your business going for the future. So whatever money you've received from the government in terms of a grant, in terms of a BBL loan, invested wisely in your business, Make sure it's a safe place for customers to come and make sure it's a safe place for you and your employers to be working in. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I want to um, uh, just point out the four point plan that uh, Catering Association UK has um, uh, put to the government. CEO UK, alongside other associations across the UK, has advised a four point plan which it believes the government must adopt to, to ensure the whole industry survives. The four points are the government to make contribution to co cover workers pay for next six months to ensure that the uk's hospitality uh, infrastructure remains intact number two the extension of loan payment start date to restaurants and takeaways and other hospitality companies to embell them to ease the pressure payment holidays of taxes and duties that restaurants are obliged to pay, including a temporary suspension or reduction of VAT. 
and uh, number four or point four was the uh, point four that we uh, came up with because we had a, a long discussion about this undocumented workers and everything so what we did was we have asked the government to look into it the government to support undocumented worker through their new point based system if an undocumented worker fits the criteria he she should be allowed to apply through this new point based system these are the four uh, um, points that we raised with the government let's see what's the uh, outcome uh, uh, comes from them and we will definitely talk about this uh, in the next uh, program um, anyhow mr shakat uh, we're coming to an end very shortly and it has been a pleasure to have you with us i want to know that um, like in uk indian and bangladeshi food industry is a massive it's around 4 billion pound industry in this i'm talking about just the our indian and bangladeshi food um what is the uh, food industry worth in bangladesh uh, mr shakrat the uh, food industry in bangladesh is uh, uh, if you only uh, consider the restaurant and the catering uh, it is uh, more or less um, around 1.5 billion and if you uh, take the five star hotels and uh, uh, the uh, chain international hotels it is around uh, uh, another um, point, 1 billion so it is 2.5 billion industry uh, here in in bangladesh but the uh, total uh, turnover uh, if you consider to uk to here in uh, bangladesh uh, it is a little bit lesser but the prospect uh, here in bangladesh is not uh, um, bad as uh, the previous uh, years uh, it is it is a booming industry here in bangladesh and many restaurants many hotels motels are coming here and you know uh, many five star hotels are coming in five years uh, time in bangladesh at least 10 to 20 five star hotels are coming and um, I, I don't know what would happen now but uh, they are proposing and they are working here and uh, food industry uh, here in bangladesh is uh, getting massive and massive and many investors are uh, coming in bangladesh and uh, uh, containing the people of bangladesh around 18 uh, 118 uh, um, uh, million people 18 crore what you can say so at this market it is it is a big uh, you said 4 billion in uh, um, uh, uk but in no, bangladesh uh, it is not uh, uh, let, let me let me clarify this 4 billion is just the indian se uh, sector indian and oh, bangladesh okay. only in the indian sector yeah uh, there okay. are lots of other foods and uh, there is lots of other, other i mean we're not but we're not it, mentioning the restaurant uh, hotel we're not mentioning italian french lots of other cuisine but uh, we, we are discussing just about uh, uh, indian and bangladeshi sector this is a 4 yes. billion pound industry it's a massive industry when you talk about uh, only one uh, um, sector i mean indian bangladesh combined sector it's a massive industry um, so, obviously so bangladesh uh, as a whole i mean 2 billion dollar industry is not is, is, is a massive industry as well and yes. obviously um, um, as you just said that all these big chains are coming uh, obviously when the big chains come they do their research and everything and i'm sure uh, they know uh, there is a big industry over there and, and, and the contribution of this uh, uh, hospitality and tourism industry to our gdp is around 4.6 percent so it, it is a big contribution to the gdp and GDP. Uh, more or less uh, more or less 40 lakh people uh, are engaged with this industry and five uh -huh. to seven lakh people directly work in this industry uh, and they are impacted directly and uh, many passive people are working for example some tour guides uh, some uh, uh, some people those those who are entrepreneur they are working in this industry also they are passive worker if you consider the active worker it is not less than five to seven lakh so okay. this, this is this is actually a huge number of employment and huge number of money rolling uh, in in bangladesh and uh, what is exactly right at this moment in bangladesh in five years time it will be double so uh, why i said it is double because uh, the investors uh, are coming in Bangladesh and many construction infrastructure and ship shipyards and many industries are coming and I guess you you guys are well aware that in Bangladesh our recent government has done 100 economy zone and many economy zone already in in uh, operation so Korea Japan China India Russia they are already in investing in Bangladesh and uh, many power plants are happening so this uh, uh, with this kind of invest uh, investors and this industry also growing up because they need food they are eating and and this kind of industry rapidly growing and uh, mm. hence uh, i guess uh, what you said is uh, very good and i can um, share with you uh, 
uh, from Bangladesh International Hotel Association, we have given uh, an application to Bangladesh government to uh, give us many facilities uh, like uh, to uh, suspend our VAT to the next year, uh, to suspend our uh, um, utility bills, uh, for example, uh, what we call heat, light and power, that is electricity, uh, gas, and our water bill uh, to um, take it forward uh, to the next year and the income taxes for the investors and for the owners and income tax for the employee to defer to the next year because we, we cannot pay also owner cannot pay they they are they cannot earn anything and mm. right at this moment and tax holiday that has to be reinforced in bangladesh if you establish a five star hotel and a, and a hospitality business then some tax holiday provisions are there so the government should reinforce after covid this tax holiday here in bangladesh and also the there are some peculiar thing here in bangladesh i guess it is not in england uh, it is called supplementary duty for example if you have some alcohol it is only on alcohol because go what government has the government has given value added tax in every item that what you know uh, it depends on uh, uh, it, it is around 15% on food so after this 15% some 20% on top of it uh, is as a compound basis comes at supplementary duty uh, it is for the alcohol so uh, uh, to attract the tourist and all i guess this kind of supplementary duty government can defer for some few years and government must have to help our uh, tourism and hospitality field basically the small and medium entrepreneur and the uh, big entrepreneur uh, in uh, restaurant and uh, hotel business uh, to some uh, loan in in with easy manner and with the easy installation and with uh, uh, less interest so that what would happen this industry will sustain otherwise uh, this industry will um, collapse and many employment that what i told you many employment will go out of the blue and out of the window and many uh, people will lose their job many investor will be uh, collapse and they cannot do anything hence the total uh, government will fall in a difficult situation and uh, the forecast of the economy uh, will be very bad and the circulation of the money will stop and the uh, total environment will be in a very uh, difficult environment to sustain so these these are the things what we have said to our government to do sure Thank sure you. i i think i think uh, look every government uh, in everywhere um uh, they're helping their country and they will do that because long as they uh, can afford it and everything because uh, this is where um the 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 country will survive otherwise the country will collapse um, if any industry goes down so for every industry like um, uh, the um hospitality industry the government there's loads of other industry that obviously um whatever help their government can and i'm sure they will do that um in sure, sure. uk we, as you said that we've got it and you know we are asking for more the reason for that is because we we want to survive and we want to move on uh, obviously and this is as i said it's a small uh, 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 industry that we talked about this this is huge the hospitality industry is huge in uk as well um yeah and even in bangladesh obviously you're only talking about the people that the investors are going there all the hotels are full once the bangladesh starts taking tourism uh, 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 people in um, uh, there's not enough hotel there um yeah. anyway uh, mr shakot it was uh, uh, um very nice talking to you and uh, it is our pleasure to have you here and thank you for your input as well um and uh, uh mr mashroff um thank you very much for your input as well obviously you had your bilash hat on today not ca uk hat and uh, hope that your planning for the next uh, 18 month goes well and um, uh, i hope that uh, the government comes out with the date for uh, restaurants uh, and pubs uh, to be open in the uk we are hoping that it's going to be 4th of uh, july and uh, uh, we will uh, tell you the viewers that uh, next uh, what we hear from the government regarding our four point uh, 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 request to the government um, anyway thank you very much uh, for uh, tuning in and it is always a pleasure to have you all watching uh, ca uk program we will be coming back next week uh, with our uh, guest and there'll be guest uh, regarding uh, the the uh, the partitions the what you need in the restaurants uh, we've got mr tony coming along uh, next wednesday uh, to tell us more about the uh, how 
and what do we have to do physically in the restaurants and obviously he will tell us he will uh, show us his his uh, product as well thank you very much and uh, good night in bangladesh and uh, good afternoon in uk